Hi! In this lesson, we are going to introduce one of the most fundamental concepts in programming, variables. As a quick reminder, the task we are continuing to tackle is being able to determine the different options in bagging our 56 jawbreakers. As we saw before, it's very easy to make calculations with Python and keep it organized by printing string labels. One of the problems with this code here is that we don't necessarily know or remember what all these numbers mean, especially if we didn't have our string labels. Also, if we want to change any of the numbers, we'd have to do it in multiple places. In programming, just like in math, we often don't just use numbers in our calculations. We use something called variables. Variables, as we'll see, will help us better understand the code and make the programs more efficient. So let's talk about variables. A variable is like a box with a name that holds a value to be used throughout a program. Let's take this box here and name it candy. Now let's store the value of 56 in it. We can print the value of the variable by using its name in the print statement. Notice there are no quotes around the name. This is because it's a variable name, not a string we're trying to print. To create the variable in Python, we have what we call an assignment statement. There are two parts to the statement, the name of the variable, candy, and the value we are assigning to it, which in this case is 56. Again, when I run this program, the print statement prints the value of the variable, not the name. Since we are storing a whole number, the type of variable is called an integer variable. As a reminder, an integer is any positive or negative whole number that doesn't have a decimal. We can also store a string or text in a variable like the word jawbreakers. We have a similar assignment statement as before. The name is candy, but now the stored value is jawbreakers. We need quotes around jawbreakers because it is a string we are storing in contrast to the variable name. When we print candy, the value still prints, which this time is the word jawbreakers. Since the variable is storing a string, we call this a string variable. The last thing we need to talk about is how to name a variable. There are a few simple guidelines to follow here. It must be descriptive, meaning the name must describe what the variable is representing. Variable means nothing, whereas count is telling us what it is doing. It can't start with a number, and most often should start with a lowercase letter. Instead of one candy, change it to candy underscore one. All letters should be lowercase, so instead of bags with a capital B, we write bags with a lowercase b. And we should use underscores to separate words instead of spaces. So instead of candy space type, let's write candy underscore type equals jawbreakers. Awesome. Let's now switch to the live editor and see this in action. We'll start by declaring our variables. And so we'll use the same variables that we've already discussed. Um, and you'll see right away that this is going to add meaning to these values of 56 and 2. Um, so these aren't just numbers now, it's candy count and bag count. And then we'll write the same print statements uh, that we did before as well. Um, and instead of writing uh, 2 and 56, we're going to write the variable names bag count and then candy count. And again, this makes the, the code much easier to understand because uh, these numbers have values and so we know what the calculations are doing and what the print statements are doing. So when I run this, I see the same uh, four lines, so everything looks identical. So one thing to point out here is that bag count is used three different times in our program. Um, and so this is very important. So if I wanna change the value of bag count to let's say three, I only have to do it in one place and it will change it in all three places uh, in our program. So when I run this, you'll see the calculation as updated as expected. Um, so this is very important, especially as we have more complex programs. If we use variables, then we only have to change it uh, in specific locations without having to adjust it everywhere um, that the, the variable is used. So now let's go ahead and copy this. Um, and what I'm going to do is just update, update the value of bag count. Um, and we'll see here now that it prints a bag count of three up top and then a bag count of four down below. And so by assigning that variable of bag count four, it doesn't affect 
any of the calculations or print statements um, prior to it. So at this point, we can just copy and paste this, um, and we'll update the variable and assign it a new value. And then when we run it, it'll show our three different options. Um, so prints, everything looks the same, but now our code is so much easier to read uh, using the variables. And again, if I want to update the values, I only have to do it you know, in each uh, space once, and then all the calculations and print statements update accordingly. Great. So let's do a quick summary here because this is very important. As we saw in our demo, there are a variety of benefits to using variables in our program. Here are a few that we discussed. It allows you to add context and meaning to numbers, so candy count means more than 56. We can re reuse the variable in multiple locations, and if needing to change the value, you only need to do it once. And I can't understate how important this is as soon as we have complex programs, because that variable could be used 50 times, and you would never want to go through and, and change the value in each of those 50 locations. So by using the variable as the placeholder, we only need to change it once, and all the locations would update accordingly. And now it's your turn to start incorporating the variables into your programs.